March 2019, a river in a Malaysian town in the southern state of Johor was poisoned. I cannot talk. And my vision started to blur. Which, uh, my head is really dizzy at times. More than 4,000 people, mainly children, fell ill in Paseguda after inhaling toxic fumes caused by chemicals dumped into Kim Kim River. The river flows into the Straits of Johor between Peninsula Malaysia and Singapore. Hundreds were hospitalized and required treatment for breathing difficulties. Some are still traumatized and continue to suffer. Terlalu banyak ni tutup untuk kes ni. Memang ada orang-orang yang satu geng yang menjaga kilang-kilang ni. Di mana kalau ada apa-apa berlaku, geng ni akan turun. How did the illegal dumping of chemical waste spark a pollution crisis that forced more than 100 schools in the Johor region to shut? And who are the victims still fighting for reparations? Sixth March, 2019. It was another morning in Paseguda, Johor. Parents were dropping off their half-awake children at school, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. But in just moments, some would have their lives changed forever. It smells like a burnt, burnt rubber or something. I feel like it's worse than that. Like that smell actually got stuck in my throat. Within minutes, Children were throwing up. Some were shaking uncontrollably, and others fainted. I cannot talk, and my vision started to blur. Which, uh, my head is really dizzy. I collapsed. I cannot do anything. Mostly, I cannot move my hands. I cannot do anything. But I can hear. Just that my vision is just black, but I can hear. Some children are just screaming said they had sore throat and their eyes burns. Mostly, I just felt scared. The local fire department rushed to the scene and were met with hundreds of students who had suddenly become very ill. Kes Sungai Kim Kim ini merupakan kes pertama yang berlaku yang melibatkan satu mangsa yang amat besar. Dan mangsa yang terjejas menunjukkan simptom yang sesak nafas, muntah-muntah. Sampai satu keadaan tu pelajar-pelajar sekolah ni ada yang menggigil tangan, mata dah separuh. Macam dalam keadaan serentak, ramai, jumlah yang ramai. Kami uh, menghantar pelajar-pelajar um, yang kritikal direct ke hospital dan kami membuat pe pengasingan antara pelajar yang tidak terjejas dan juga pelajar yang terjejas. Emergency room, emergency itu memang tak boleh masuk. Memang kaos, memang penuh dengan pesakit. Kita tulis nama anak kita ke situ. Sebab so, itu saat anak saya uh, dah nombor ke-200 lebih. Lah. Uh, akhirnya kita tunggu, tunggu, tunggu. Patient dah dekat 1,000 saya tengok dalam bis itu. Dekat seribu, masih Ifan tak ada berita lagi. Pukul empat itulah, barulah ada berita. Seorang nurse datang, Encik Irfan, ibu ayah Irfan. Irfan dah masuk ke red zone. Maksudnya dah masuk ward. So, barulah kami lega. So, you imagine lah, daripada pukul sepuluh pagi, saya tak tahu anak saya kat mana. Sampai pukul empat itu, baru kita tahu anak kita kat mana. For the next two weeks, 111 schools closed and almost 5,000 people were hospitalized or required treatment. Cara pemantauan uh, fizikal, uh, kami dapat perhatikan terdapat uh, tumpukan seperti minyak di permukaan sungai, sepanjang sungai Kim Kim. Semasa pasukan kami sampai, punca bahan masih lagi belum dijumpai. Dan lebih kurang uh, selepas dua jam membuat proses pengesanan, kami menemui punca bahan kimia, sisa bahan kimia yang dibuang di tebing sungai. Almost 2.5 tons 
or 2,500 kilograms of chemical substances from an oil tanker was illegally dumped on a riverbank half a kilometer away from the schools. It had emitted toxic gases into the air and disseminated further by trickling into Kim Kim River. This river spans 1.5 kilometers through Pasegudang, flowing through several other rivers within the town. Samples initially taken from the river showed a contamination of poisonous organic solvents and compounds, such as benzene, toluene, xylene, ethylbenzene, and acrylonitrile. Short-term exposure to these chemicals can cause dizziness, nausea, and irritation of the eyes and skin. The American Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry classifies acrylonitrile as a possible human carcinogen. Dr. Rahim Mohammed Yusuf is the chairman of a scientific committee that was set up by the Johor State Government to identify and advise on the cause of pollution at Pase Gudang. There were many chemicals detected uh, using the uh, portable instruments, okay? Uh, of course, uh, BTEX, yeah? benzene, toluene, irital benzene, and also xylene yeah? at a uh, small amount, yeah? But also, later on, they found out that there were two other chemicals, which is acrolytral and also acrolein. Uh, so, and uh, we suspected that these two chemicals that uh, caused the, uh, what happened, uh, what happened during, during the day. The chemicals basically are monomers uh, to produce uh, plastics and also uh, synthetic rubbers, okay? And as you know, there are many factories in uh, Pasuguda that are uh, plastic-based industry, uh, and also uh, ordinary chemical industries, which makes use of these two chemicals. These chemicals are basically volatile, volatile chemicals, right? So like any other volatile chemicals, you know, when, when they inhale, yeah, inhale, and then they will uh, feel dizzy, they will, uh, if, if they inhale at a, large amount and then there might be possible of vomiting also uh, they, they might faint and uh, well of course if you he inhale uh, uh, to a very large extent then that might be critical to you. Pase Gudang is an industrial town in Johor Bahru, Malaysia. The town is home to heavy industries like petrochemicals and oleochemicals. There are more than 2,000 factories, including plastic, rubber, and palm oil product manufacturers and recyclers. 252 of them are chemical-based. That is an approximate ratio of 23 residents per factory. With residential developments on the rise, hundreds of homes and schools are within the industrial area. During a town hall session with residents of Pasekuda in August of 2019, the former chief minister of Johor, Dr. Sahruddin Jamal expressed disappointment with development plans as they did not consider the long-term effects on the local people and the environment. In 2015, a detailed environmental impact assessment was released by Lotte Chemical. The company operates one of the largest petrochemical facilities in Pasekuda. The report found that the measured values of some volatile organic compounds within the plant's premises exceeded odor threshold values, and that was contributed by the large number of similar oleochemical plants in the area. Besides oleochemical factories, recycling plants have also been on the rise in the town. The factory that was allegedly responsible for the March 2019 illegal dumping was involved in the business of pyrolysis, burning used tires or rubber products to make a low-grade oil. When done correctly, Pyrolysis is seen as an environmentally friendly way of recycling waste to energy. Controlling emissions and processing waste residue, however, can be expensive, tempting factory owners to cut corners with their disposal methods. While many suffered mild symptoms of poisoning during the incident, one child wasn't so lucky. 12-year-old Irfan's life changed forever. The first day when I was in the hospital, I cannot feel my legs. So when I walk, I fall. 
So a few days later, after I discharged, I started to use a walking stick. It actually helped me a lot, because now I can walk. I can walk like, I can walk with stable. Yes, no, I don't like to travel really far, but Mostly, I don't think about all that. I just keep myself busy and stop complaining. I don't really talk a lot. I mostly just say it in my mind. Why does it hurt a lot? When can I cure this? When can I do that? Kalau ikutkan laporan dia, perbatasan ni Dr. Ku tu, dia confirm suffering from myokimia due to the alleged uh, toxic waste from Sungai Kim Kim. Myokemia is an involuntary or spontaneous quivering of muscles, where in some cases, like Irfan's, the condition can be painful and debilitating. I mostly blame myself because why did I try to drink some water? Why did I inhale deeply? Myokemia can be caused by a number of things, like high levels of stress or anxiety. But it can also be caused by toxic poisoning. Dia tak pernah masuk ward sebab penyakit kritikal. Kalau dia nak disebabkan dia kata Ifan yang punca pada lain selain pada Sungai Kim Kim, itu saya tak setuju. Kalau dia nak nafikan, bukan daripada Sungai Kim Kim. Abi budak-budak yang pensan masa hari kejadian itu datang di mana? Macam mana boleh? RM5,000, RM6,000 orang itu daripada mana datang? Ya? Orang yang, uh, daripada mana datang? Once an avid rock climber and swimmer, Irfan now can only spend a few minutes on his feet before the pain becomes unbearable. Sometimes some of my new friends ask, how does it feel? Is it really hard to walk? Why are you using a walking stick? What's wrong with your legs? Why does it shake a lot? Because remembering the answer to their question makes me even more, I don't know, scared, sad, because I keep remembering the incident. Kita sini saja si Ifan, dia kata, Ifan, kalau awak dapat peluang, sekolah di luar pasir gudang, awak terima. Dia kata, sebab selagi awak sedut environment pasir gudang, ni udara tak bersih, selagi itu awak tak boleh baik. What could the authorities have done to prevent such an incident from unfolding? Is there a need for stricter environmental laws especially in areas with a high residential population. More than 4,000 people in Pasir Gudang, Johor, Malaysia, were treated for toxic fume inhalation in March 2019. Almost immediately after the incident, Local authorities charged a lorry driver and all three directors of P-Tech Resources, a used tire processing company, for conspiring to illegally dump chemical waste into Kim Kim River. The men were also alleged to have caused air pollution for failing to carry out the necessary monitoring. The company has since been ordered to stop operations. The law is very comprehensive, saying that nobody can just put it anywhere, dump it anywhere, keep it anywhere. It needs to be managed properly because this is our shadow waste and these are considered as toxic waste. This is actually the first case that we had uh, for years since the beginning of the uh, industrial rise of this Pasir Gurang area. This is the first case that we had uh, of illegal dumping of shadow waste, right? And it's not common in Malaysia. It's just that I think some of the premises, they are taking the way, easy way out, you know, because to dispose properly of all the shadow waste, it needs, it will definitely cost money. Well, specifically 
uh, we had a lot of action that had been taken, initiative, not just from the Department of Environment, but it's actually from the government of Malaysia. And we can see that uh, after the Kim Kim uh, incidents, the government actually really spending a lot of money, uh, invest a lot of uh, uh, resources in and around Pasir Gudang to make sure that this incidents will never happen. Dr. Zaki Zainuddin is a member of the International Water Association and a renowned environmental consultant with vast experience in the area of water quality assessments. He has spent most of his career surveying the waters of Malaysia. Okay, oxygen level is a, at a very lowly 1.2 milligrams per liter. That's actually considered to be very low. Typically, rivers, clean rivers, we have an oxygen level of about six, seven milligrams per liter. So this is very low. But uh, what more is interesting is the conductivity. The conductivity is 974 micro siemens per centimeter. That shows that, uh, you know, a moderately polluted river would have a conductivity reading of less than 500. So this is 970. So that means that there are pollutants in this river. Lah. In, exactly, you know, there are uh, pollutants that have been dislodged uh, into this river from uh, upstream sources. It's very important for us to, to, to distinguish what happened. What happened with respect to the Kim Kim incident was an illegal dumping incident that incurred river pollution. But I think the point that we have to appreciate that is that Kim Kim River was already polluted even before the dumping incident. Kim Kim eventually drains to the Straits of Johor. Okay, so river pollution, not just Kim Kim, but uh, most of the rivers in Johor will inadvertently have an effect uh, towards the Straits of Johor. We have certain limitation with respect to our regulations in the sense that even though if we limit, uh, meet the limits as per the regulations, uh, there's no guarantee that the river will not be polluted. And the reason, the reason for that is because our uh, regulations when it comes to uh, pertaining to effluent discharges still count on dilution by the river. By the river. That means the river uh, still needs to dilute the effluent. Now, this is a problem because uh, for two reasons. One, if the river is small and doesn't have sufficient dilution capacity, then when uh, the volume, the amount of pollutant that goes into the river is large, then the river can still become polluted. That's the first issue. Uh, the second issue is, the second issue is, even if the river is big, like in the case of Kim Kim, is 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 uh, Kim Kim is, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's not significantly large, but it's it's uh, moderate in size. But because there are so many sources going into the river, the river becomes overloaded with pollutants, despite maybe the, source, the, the uh, sources within the catchment meeting the regulation. Since the incident, 13 factories were given stop work orders, while 200 others were given compounds, some of which were fines for dumping procedures. The Department of Environment has also doubled its enforcement on the factories and premises of Pase Gudang, with 664 inspections in 2019. But there are some residents who believe these measures have had little effect in stopping illegal practices in the area. Yang kita nampak di sebalik uh, tong-tong sampah ni dan sebalik pokok di hadap uh, di hadapan saya ni di belakang tu ada sebiji kilang eh. di mana kilang tu telah menyimpan uh, bahan-bahan kimikal, eh, bahan-bahan kimikal dalam tu tanpa uh, SOP, eh, bahan-bahan tu disimpan dan uh, saya rasa tempat ni dah dimasuki oleh pihak pihak berkuasa beberapa kali tapi sampai sekarang pun uh, tiada apa-apa tindakan daripada pihak yang uh, berwajib Mr Y has been living in Pasir Gudang with his family for more than 20 years his daughter was one of the victims of the toxic fume incident Mr Y has been closely monitoring the situation over the past year but he's afraid of revealing too much Pihak pihak itulah. Maksud saya yang menjaga kawasan sini lah. 
uh, mana je warning lah selepas ni kalau kata uh, buat laporan ataupun buat sesuatu pada kawasan ini dia akan ambil uh, tindakan yang lebih keras daripada kita. Untuk keselamatan uh, saya bersama rakan-rakan saya jadi uh, saya boleh hanya boleh bagi informasi lah uh, keadaan uh, apa nama apa yang uh, kilang ni telah lakukan pada apa nama tarikh tersebut. Jadi kita minta pihak berwajib, pihak berkuasa uh, selepas ni kena atasi lah masalah ni dengan segera lah sebab kita tengok pun sampai sekarang pun uh, kilang ni masih beroperasi ya eh, seperti sedia kala eh, tanpa uh, rasa macam bersalah. Eh. Uh, jadi kita tengok uh, macam mana pihak berkuasa selepas ni dia jalankan tugas atau tidak ataupun ada unsur-unsur lain yang menyebabkan pihak berkuasa tak boleh menjalankan tugas dengan sebaik mungkin. Other residents have also started their own investigations. Mr. Rex has been collecting evidence for over a year. He photographs and records his observations that he shares with the authorities are on social media. He tells us to meet him at a cross junction of the factory district where many heavy chemical production plants are located. Sekarang kita berada di Tanjung Langsat Pasir Udang. Tepatnya dekat ada satu parit lah. Parit ni menghubungkan dengan uh, di mana kumpulnya semua longkang-longkang yang ada kat kilang ni. And then tertumpu je kat sini, masuk terus ke dalam sungai lah. Secara direct. Secara peribadi lah saya dapat katakan memang tercemar sebab saya sendiri lihat dengan mata kepala saya sendiri apa yang berlaku waktu waktu hujan lagi kali kalau hujan turun lah bila hujan turun so longkang ni memang banyak air masing-masing saya saya nampak sendiri lah kimikal boleh kata kimikal lah sebab ada bau sebab ada warna pun ada and then dia memasuki ke kita punya tanah uh, tanah yang uh, filter yang ada kat sini and then bawa lepas ke dalam sungai. Kalau oh, kita share sikit keadaan kat sini memang puih sepanjang-panjang ni. Boleh tengok eh kadang-kadang sini boleh tengok. Cuba tengok bagi dia bau. Saya pernah datang bersama dengan orang kampung dekat parit yang ada depan mata saya ni. Uh, bersama dengan ketua kampung uh, ahli parlimen kat sini. Uh, Don kat sini pun dia datang dan kita sendiri saya tunjuk dia orang. Inilah parit YB tengok sendiri, inilah parit yang apa ni dikatakan sebagai ada filter dalam tu and then dia orang buang direct dalam tu. Dan, uh, itu untuk mana-mana itu adalah 6 bulan lalu ke 7 bulan lalu. So sekarang ni saya berada di sini, saya boleh nampak lagi filter tu masih ada lagi dalam ni dan tiada tindakan daripada pihak mana-mana pihak lagi. Sekilau kita tengok uh, yang saya nampak lah. Kilang kat sini masih lagi buang kat sini sebabnya uh, tak ada pengok kasaan yang ketat lah. Lagi satu, kita punya akta sangat-sangat lemah. He believes there are other powers at play. Sebenarnya memang, kita memang ada dapat lah dengar, ada dengar uh, bila kita jalan kat sini ke apa, akan ada orang yang akan uh, tanya kita lah, buat apa kat sini? Buat apa kat sini? Kenapa tengok? Cek apa? Nanti akan ada orang yang akan tegur kita lah. So, itu mungkin antara satu punca je kenapa orang penduduk kat sini kurang uh, nak nak tengok apa ni nak memantau sendiri ke gelang ni. Itu antara yang saya nampak lah. So, memang uh, apa yang saya dengar, memang ada gelang uh, dikatakan Orang-orang yang satu geng yang menjaga kilang-kilang ni, di mana kalau ada apa-apa berlaku, geng ni akan turun dalam keadaan dalam keadaan, dalam keadaan segera. Bound by their shared experiences, victims of the incidents often meet to update each other on how they've been coping. Seperti kita setiap maklum, uh, genap, eh, genap setahun tujuh bulan tiga itu lagi, genap setahun. Jadi kita pun nak tertanya-tanya apa kesudahan benda ini. Tuan-tuan dan perempuan, adilah, luahkanlah apa nak luah. Supaya mereka ini tahu apa yang dah berlaku dekat tempat kita ini. Sebagai mangsa, saya memang takkan lupalah benda ini. Pukul tiga pagi, tujuh hari bulan masa itu, bulan tiga. Pukul tiga pagi itu, saya terhidup bau sangat-sangat kuat. Jadi so, saya fikir, 
Apa yang bau? Saya fikir, eh, dah pergi aku ke bocor? Oh. Saya cek, no. Semua saya kejut anak-anak saya dua orang. Saya kat bangun, saya ambil dokumen-dokumen penting, saya keluar. Tetapi bau yang air itu memang luar biasa. Seolah-olah macam bau petrol ni kita betul hidup dekat hidung kita. Sangat ba kuat. Bayangkan kita uh -huh. tidur boleh terjaga sebab hidup benda alam tu. Hmm. Sedangkan kita dalam keadaan tidur. Dia lepas yang dia kena ni, kalau dia demam dia sesak nampak. Sebelum ni dia demam tak ada benda. Sekarang ni uh, dia demam masa tu nangis. Kenapa nangis? Dia kata tak boleh bernafas. Lepas tu kita dapat tu yang jumpa uh, jumpa doktor tu bagi tahu lah. Cuma doktor kata ah, sekarang tak ada apa kan okey kan. Ah, itu ada doktor cakap ayat dia ah, biasa. Saya sendiri saya pergi klinik kesihatan tu. Saya bawa saya punya dia kata saya dah separa dah separa gila. Bila saya kata saya mengalami sintem macam ni. Tapi dia tengok rekod saya memang sungai Kim Kim. Ah, perempuan ni memang dah, puan dah tak normal di sekarang. Puan kena pergi overseas ke, pergi kena buat meditasi untuk melegakan. Puan ada depression, puan kena relax. Tapi bila kita nak biarkan benda ni dah setahun kan? Sebab kesan ni memang tak nampak sekarang. Tunggu 4 5 tahun akan datang. Tiba-tiba kami ni bakal kena cancel lah, kena tu kena ini lah. But Dr. Rahim, who's been involved with the findings of the incident at Kim Kim River, believes the incident has little to do with the current ailments as described by the victims. Basically, uh, if you ask, you know, the the people from the medical uh, you know, uh, background area, uh, the doctors, for example, uh, uh, basically, in any incident, if there's a one-off uh, case. Uh, uh, there should be no problem. I mean, uh, the effect will be on that particular instant. They, they don't have the long-term effect. To some extent, the, of course, if you compare living to industrial area compared to uh, rural area, of course, yeah, the rural area might be much more healthier to, to, to live in. If you, I think if you scan through the Pasukuran, the, the school children, for example, and then you can find out some have asthma, yeah, some are okay, yeah, some uh, maybe have some other, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, weaknesses. Yeah? So, uh, of course, uh, in industrial area, there might be some uh, variations in the, the, the condition of the health of the school children. This is not just a problem for the people of Pase Gudang. In many industrial towns all over the world, health risks are a major concern. One study in Canada showed a strikingly high rate of cancer amongst locals in a small manufacturing town aptly named Chemical Valley. A 2019 medical journal found that there were three times more cases of acute myeloid leukemia in the area than the national average. Back in Pase Gudang, a costly cleanup effort of Kim Kim River was organized immediately after the March 2019 incident. But barely three months after, tragedy struck again. An illegal dumping of almost 2.5 tons of toxic waste at a riverbank in Pasigudang, Malaysia affected thousands of residents. The authorities organized a cleanup of the area, where almost 400 tons of water and 250 bags of soil and sludge were collected and sent for disposal. This effort cost approximately 2 million US dollars. But in June 2019, barely three months after the first incident, a familiar putrid stench filled Pase Gudang once again. This time, it spread six kilometers from the previous site. Hospitals were filled with people complaining of dizziness, respiratory problems, and nausea. The nightmare had returned. The incident was called Ops Mawa, after the residential area that was most affected. So if you guys, this thing, that's serious. Residents were livid. While initial investigations found that air pollution was the cause of the incident, those who live in the area believe current regulations lack bite and the control approach is insufficient. Up until today, we do not have any conclusive evidence saying that 
there is there is a uh, link between the Sungai Kim Kim incident and the Taman Mawar incident. Um, but we do know the fact that uh, the incident was happened uh, due to the fact of air pollution. Uh, there was a smell that the children are, uh, are affected. Uh, waktu di Ops Mawar ni, Ops Mawar ni, dia lebih menjurus pada satu bahan kimia atau budal beracun yang dipanggil methyl mecaptan. Methyl mecaptan ni adalah satu bahan yang digunakan dalam uh, biasanya dalam uh, gas masakan. Di pasir kudang ni memang amat unik sebab bahan sebenarnya uh, tidak dapat dikenal pasti dan kebanyakannya adalah bahan buangan yang dah bercampur dan mengeluarkan satu tindak balas kimia yang menyebabkan beberapa gas-gas beracun yang tak sepatutnya ada pun ada. Till today, there is no official cause to the second air pollution incident. The authorities did not find any illegal dump sites near the alleged area, and the initial air quality report indicated no traces of carbon monoxide of volatile organic compounds in the vicinity. Methyl mecaptan uh, is basically also a, a normal chemical that is being used as herbicides. The smell of methyl mecaptan is, uh, is is very pungent. It's very uh, what called very smell. It's like durian, okay? And worse than durian, okay? Because it's uh, sulf, uh, it's sulfide. It contains sulfur inside. One of the school, which is uh, Sekola Agama Taman Mawar. Uh, I think uh, that school, uh, maybe the, 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 the gas is uh, higher in kind of concentration around the school, eh? and some of the school children vomited. Eh? So when some of the school children vomited, okay, then that caused another problem. Okay? So the other children, when they saw their friends vomited, and that caused uh, trauma to them. Eh? And you know, when you see when you see somebody vomit vomited and then you also you know have the feeling to vomit so this was what happened in taman mawa over the last several months the authorities have continued to introduce new measures in an effort to prevent further incidents from occurring since february 2020 the department of environment in johor has mobilized air pollution monitors in 25 locations around pasaguda including in several schools. Okay. So actually, this system is powered by the solar system. So we have the 24 hour without interruptions. So in this system, we have the gas detector, the PID. When the gas collector from the top, so it will flow into the system and it will be, it will be detected by the detector. And we can understand that what is a total volatile organic compound in the air. So if the TVOC in the ambience exceeds certain limits, so the alarm will be triggered. So the pumps will be just automatically to collect the gas into the tailor beds. So in this tailor bed is filled with the gas, so the alarm will send to the uh, officials, so the officer will collect the gas back and send to the mobile labs. So we can identify what is the compound in the ambient air that will trigger the alarms. So since the Swine King King incident, and after the DO implement all the preventive measures, so actually no incident occur again. While the monitoring of air quality is assured some residents, a large number still believe the condition of the rivers continue to remain in the unhealthy zone. The Australian Laboratory Services, or ALS, is an international laboratory testing company that provides industrial and environmental analytical services. The ALS conducts tests on surface water bodies for contaminants and pollutants. They took samples of Kim Kim River for testing. Based on the environmental quality report produced by the Department of Environment, I think, if I'm not mistaken, about 2015, so the class was false under class three because of the uncontrolled pollution uh, towards the, the Sungai Kim Kim. So perhaps it could be down to the uh, class four or class five. So we are going to test according to the uh, Department of Environment uh, River Water Quality classes, which we already ran it uh, years ago, many, many years ago. So we just do exactly as what 
uh, Department of Environment, DOE, has been tested so that we can have a fair comparison on what we have done today and exactly to what DOE data has. A sample was also taken from Selanka, a river that flows from Kim Kim. Will the results match the local agency's reports, or will they reveal further contamination? In a span of four months in 2019, Pasay Kudang in Johor, Malaysia, suffered two air pollution incidents, affecting thousands of residents. While some suffer from health problems, others are struggling to put food on the table. Asli Muhammad Aziz is a third-generation fisherman who's lived and worked in Pasay Kudang all his life. Lebih pada 10 tahun dulu, sehinggalah kejadian pada 7 April 3 2019. Memang tak ada aktiviti tangkapan nelayan di dalam kawasan Sungai King Kim sebab sungai ini memang dah sebelum tu dah tercemarlah kesan daripada kumbahan logi daripada logi kumbahan najis kesan daripada kumbahan perumahan dan juga daripada kelang-kelang. Ini kita dapat lihat apabila berlaku hujan berlaku hujan sudah pasti segala sisi-sisi kumbahan ini akan mengalir mengikut sungai dan ianya akan berakhir di laut. Jadi ianya secara langsung memberi kesan pada, uh, pada hidupan hidupan laut yang mana umum uh, penduduk tempatan dan juga yang di luar telah memaklum bahawa uh, Sungai King Kim ini terletak di perairan Selat Tebrau Timur iaitu perairan Pasir Kudang. Sudah pasti hasil-hasil tangkapan uh, nelayan khususnya di kawasan Pasir Kudang ini uh, mereka mungkin khuatir yang sumber uh, tangkapan ini tercemar oleh sisa toksin. Dari segi hasil pendaratan yang dipasarkan itu agak masyarakat di Pasir Kudang yang masih ragu-ragu sebab kita tengok kalau kita ada di Persatuan Nelayan sini kita ada pasar nelayan bahawa hasil jualannya tak seperti sebelum berlaku pencemaran. Mungkin kalau dulu kita boleh jual satu hari di pasar itu 100 ke 150 kilo sekarang kita tinggal separuh saja tangkapan masyarakat ni bahawa mereka masih ragu-ragu atau takut dengan keadaan pencemaran yang ada di Pasir Gudang. Sehingga hari ini saya bagi pihak Persatuan Nelayan dan juga nelayan-nelayan rasa amat rasa kecewa sebab uh, agensi agensi yang dipertanggungjawabkan menjaga pencemaran sama ada di darat ataupun di laut mereka tidak dapat uh, membuktikan bahawa hasil tangkapan ini selamat atau tidak. Asli believes that more needs to be done to protect the livelihood of the fishermen. Walaupun dari segi perundangan akta alam sekitar itu tidak membenarkan benda-benda kimia dan sebagainya dibuang melalui sistem perbaratan, tetapi kita nampak sebagai nelayan yang berada sering berada di kawasan pesisiran pantai ini. Akta itu betul, pemantauan ini tak ada. Pada saya tak ada pemantauan. Kalau ada pemantauan, tidak akan berlaku kes pencemaran toksik di Sungai Kingkem dan sebagainya di sungai-sungai yang lain. Months after the initial incident at Kim Kim River, affected victims came together seeking reparations from local government agencies for their physical and mental health ailments. A year has passed since the legal proceedings commenced. Anak saya sekarang kena sesak nafas dah pakai inhaler. Uh, sebelum ni tak tak ada, tak ada sesak nafas, tak ada apa, penyakit. Sekarang pun dah kena gata-gata satu badan. Pada saya, kesihatan saya, mata saya terus nampak jam, nampak masa tu. Sekarang pun masih masih sama lagi, masih dapat rawatan lagi hospital. Dia ada masalah hati, jantung dan masalah asma. Ada kelenjar tumbuh dekat body badan saya. Uh, jadi dia pada awalnya memang tak ada rasa apa-apa. Tapi kebelakangan ini selalu sakit. 160 victims are suing PTEC resources as well as 11 government departments. Among the compensation sought, approximately 1 million US dollars in general damages for Irfan 
as well as special compensation of approximately 1,000 US dollars per victim. Harapan saya semoga kerajaan dapat uh, bentangi masalah ni dengan cepat dan kalau boleh uh, ambil tahu masa-masa yang kena kesan ni. Jangan terlupa pandang lah semua ni. Sebab so, saya rasa dalam setahun ni, maybe dia orang macam dah sepi lah masalah ni. Terhad mata pandangan saya nak buat kerja pun susah. Agak sepuluh mata kan. Tu lah, semua tahukan saya pasal agak cuman mata macam ini. Apa sebab tu lah, terjah juga. Saya berharap sangat takkan ada lagi benda terjadi macam ni lagi sebab bahaya untuk kanak-kanak, untuk remaja akan datang kan terkesan semua hidup. I am very confident that these plaintiffs they have got a good case. I'm very confident they have got a good case. I've read a statement of defense yeah, by a few of the defendants and I'm very confident uh, based on the defense file by these major defendants that the plaintiffs have got a very strong case for compensation. The two river samples have been tested using a standard set by the National Water Qualities for Malaysia. With these standards, water bodies can be rated using a specific class system. Class 1 being the cleanest of water bodies through to Class 5, where the water body is too contaminated to harbour any life or be used in any way. The results of the samples showed that Kim Kim River is at Class 4, while Selangka, a tributary river of Kim Kim, is at Class 5. Selangka also showed high levels of ammonia at E. coli. Industrial pollution is a problem in Pasagudang, but could this just be the reality of living in an industrial town? Apabila berlaku pembangunan di pesisiran pantai, kamilah masyarakat nelayan yang berkorban memberi laluan untuk pembangunan dan kami ingin juga menikmati erti pembangunan tersebut. I think we can done more. We can do more basically. Yeah, we can do more and we have to do more, right? Um, uh, looking at the situation in Pasir Gudang, I think uh, we must look into all these loopholes. Yeah? Uh, as I said just now, we depend very much. Yeah? We believe the industry uh, to do self-reporting to the DOE. Yeah? Uh, but I think now yeah, we have to do some uh, check and balance to the industry. Kita nampak juga macam-macam apa uh, measure taken untuk manage kalau terjadi lagi sekali kan they install a lot of equipment around pasir gudang the gas detector gas monitoring system and so on please continue to ada itu good effort baguslah right tapi what happen to the corporate what happen to the industry kilang-kilang ni so apakah mereka akan stay kat sini dan penduduk juga akan stay who will give away Penduduk kena keluar, pindah keluar ke? Atau penghilang kena tutup? Which one campus? Eh? Penduduk ke penghilang? <SILENCIO>